I'm going to tell you guys a little story. If you've been tuning into my Nats vlog, this is, this is part three. The, uh, the day of Swiss has been completed, which means the competition to compete in the top 16, which probably should have been top 32 because every other card game ever is top 32, but this was top 16. The competition to compete in top 16 happened today. It's called Swiss. It was eight rounds of Dragon Ball. It started at around 10 o'clock, and we collected our prizing at about 9.45 p.m. So we played around 12 hours of Dragon Ball, and uh, I trained a lot. Trained a lot for this weekend. Put a lot of time in learning different decks, learning different interactions, learning different matchups. Uh, learning how to deal with Cell Surge. I did not play a single Cell Surge. But that's what happens. I uh, ended up, I had a first round buy because I did well in Chicago, but this is the story of Joku's Nats adventure starting now. Cut to boom, boom. <laughs> Like a two-dimensional like character of me with a hat, yeah, but it's like a it's like a, it's like a skeleton bone. with like a has like a mirror and an explorer. Yeah, without me without any skin. No, no skin. No skin. skin, skin me man. no skin. No skin, man. <laughs> All right. So basically, there's only so much preparation you can do. You can only prepare for an event like this so much because a big portion of it basically just comes down to luck. So. I had a first round buy, which means I didn't play in the first round. I had an automatic win in the first round because I did really well at a tournament previously this year, which qualified me for not having to play in the first round. My second round, I played this awesome dude. His name is Marshall. And uh, one of the nicest people I've ever played, he was playing Mono Blue Soul Striker. And he was a really good player. I think if a couple things in his deck were different, would have given me a lot more trouble, but I managed to get that first game too well on him. The second game I played, I went up against, I think it was Icarus. I don't know. I played a lot of Icarus. I played one Soul Striker. I played two uh, Set One Frieza. One of my, my first loss actually was against a set one freeze. I won all my matches until I played a set one freeze and I think it was round six. Yeah, round six I played Jordan Beard. Respect to you, Jordan. I lost that matchup. I shouldn't have lost, but I did lose because the turn before I minus five my baby unison, I was comboing to protect my life. And I had the decision to combo off a 10k Champa or a 10k baby ape counter counter. And I had one baby ape counter counter in my hand, so I figured I was fine to play the baby ape counter counter. So when I minus five my baby the next turn, I played Fu Shrouded. And when I played Fu Shrouded, he cold bloodlusted my Fu Shrouded. At which point I baby ape counter countered the cold bloodlust. After I baby ape counter countered, he coolered my baby ape counter counter. And if I had the other baby ape counter counter, I could have counter countered his counter counter, which would have made my foo shrouded take effect. And there is no way that he would have won after I did that. Unfortunately, I lost all that value. My baby ape did not resolve and he ended up winning that because I comboed off that wrong card. But after playing eight hours of Dragon Ball, it can get a little tricky to know which cards to combo off. The round before that, I played David Fujimura, who I have been talking to online for a really long time. I think a lot of people are giving him a lot of flack because of some misplays that happened, but honestly, like he's a really, really great dude. We had a really, really fun interaction. Um, at a certain point, when you're playing against a deck that you totally don't know what it does, I mean, you're basically reading a textbook 
when you go up against these things. So I didn't really have the mind space to like read and process every single card. I was really trying to stay on top of it, but um, it's not completely the judge's responsibility to keep track of the game state. The game state is the responsibility of the players. So as much as somebody might want to point fingers at David or point fingers at a judge, the reality is it's also my responsibility to keep track of the game state with the person that I'm playing against and just as much as he should know that he can't Kai when he has two energy, I also should know that he can't Kai when he has two energy. So that's not really fair to like just point at David and be like, oh yeah, like he's not good or whatever. The guy was playing a deck he'd never played before. He decided to play it at like 2 a.m. last night and there's so many weird interactions in that deck. So I actually give him a lot of respect for playing it. I can't ever keep track of where people's drops and warps are because people choose to put drops and warps in different places, so it's like really hard to actually keep track of where stuff is. Um, but the game's really good. I think the first game, if he hadn't had stolen my token, it would have been closer, or less close. But um, yeah, it was fun. It was really cool to play him on stream. Uh, we were at table number six, and my lucky number six, and we ended up getting to go on stream for the first time ever playing each other. Uh, after playing Jordan Beard, I played Danny Wynn, who's also on Crossworlds. They're both on the Crossworlds team. They were both playing Set One Frieza, and I managed to get the game on Danny, I think, because of a lot of the things that I learned in the matchup with Jordan. And also in game two, Danny didn't see a one drop Frieza's army until like turn five, which is ridiculous. That is not something that should happen when you're running 12 of those cards in the deck. So. It was pretty unfortunate for him. I managed to get the game off uh, the first game. And, and in this format, basically, if you get the first game, you more or less get the series. Um, my last round was against Trey Faircloth, who um, we've talked with each other quite a bit. And uh, I hung out with him for a while yesterday. And he actually helped me with my list quite a bit. Um, but... By that point in the day, I just kind of lost my marbles a little bit. The first game, we did good. I, I think I played pretty well, but I didn't get it. The second game, I was able to get off him. I was just able to establish enough Keflas and tap down his energy and just put him in a position where he couldn't outplay me, and he scooped that game. And then game three, for whatever reason, I swung with my leader, didn't untap my energy, uh, and then I double beamed a Kefla that I rivaled, which was just like really bad. Uh, yeah, that was really, really bad use of beans. But it was the last round and the last match, and that cost me the game because I did that. Um, but at that point in the game, you know, I had lost one game throughout the day. I ended up losing that one, and there was still a chance that I would have bubbled if the people that I lost to did better, then I would have gotten in top 16. But what ended up happening was they read off 32nd place to 17th place, and they started at 32. They read all the names until 18, and I wasn't called. And then 17 was my name. So top 16 gets to play tomorrow, and they will play for the championship prizing. In most card games, like I said, it should be top 32, but I managed to make it pretty far. And this was my first national championship. Um, you know, I spend a lot more time usually making content, but recently I've spent a lot of time practicing the game. Huge shout out to Johnny Teo, Miguel Kakias, my sensei and senpai. And big shout out to Giancarlo and uh, Sublet and Trey also, those guys really helped me out with my deck. Also, John Lama, I think it's Lamontero. Thank you for the East Kais, that card really came in clutch. I'll definitely do a deck profile on the deck that I played. Uh, I played Blue Yellow Soul Striker with Kefla. Kefla is such a cool card. I love blue and yellow, and uh, Soul Striker just kinda speaks my soul so it was really cool to play a deck that i constructed completely that was something that i created and felt like i really exist alongside of um it felt like 
when I needed cards, the deck would give me cards, but when I played it wrong, the deck knew I was playing it wrong and it kind of punished me for it a little bit. And it happened twice. And those two times that I didn't play it right basically cost me getting into top 16. But Goku didn't win the World Martial Arts Tournament the first two times that he competed. And not getting into the top 16 is basically like not winning the World Martial Arts Tournament for the national championship of the Dragon Ball Supercar game. So next year, I'm gonna build something even more fierce with newer cards that I'm sure will be even more fun. Hopefully they're blue and yellow and I will bring them to Nats and I will do my best to rise to the top. But huge shout out to everybody that managed to get into the top 16 today. It is, it is not a joke of a competition. This is all the best players in North America are coming together. And um, basically at the beginning of the day, you know, I, I felt like I had done all the work to prepare and at a certain point it basically is like you know you sit down and have fun and have as good of a time as you can have i got really lucky in a lot of ways i had a lot of really good matchups i managed to dodge all the sin shenron players i didn't play any cell surge players i didn't play a single gogeta player i didn't play a single red player so all those were bad matchups for me, so I was lucky in the matchups that I had, but I was playing really, really high caliber players in those matches that I had. Uh, I was able to do pretty well, and I feel good about my performance. You know, 17 is Joyza's lucky number, so I managed to get her a lucky number. Uh, and hopefully next year they'll do top 32, I think, for an event like this, it would be good to do top 32. And I got a bunch of really sweet gold cards and more than anything, got to have great interactions with friends, make a lot of new friends, interact with tons of people, and uh, just have a lot of fun. So, I want to say thanks to everybody. Thanks to Bandai for holding this event and making this amazing game. This has been the wrap-up of my vlog. We'll do some more footage tomorrow. Huge shout-out to Steve also for shooting this whole thing. You guys are going to see tons of his photos and videos. Uh, there's going to be a montage, there's all sorts of stuff. Huge shout out to the guys doing the stream, George, Brian, uh, Eggman, uh, Tony, C-Rod, all you guys did an absolutely amazing job. I forgot my bag of treasure underneath the thing, maybe I'll come grab it tomorrow. But um, yeah, Nats was an awesome experience. I'm, I'm really proud of being able to be a part of this in the first place and managing to get as far as I did and next year I'll get even farther. But yeah, I'll have a deck profile up soon and um, looking forward to chatting with you all about it. But this has been the Not Nats experience and that was my ride through the day. Uh, thank you to everybody that came on stream and watched and supported and y'all just made me feel very full in my heart. So thanks for checking it out. I am Joku DMD, and I am going to remind you to floss every night before you brush, and then brush, and take care of your teeth. I'll see you guys next time. Is that pretty good? Yeah, it was good. That was a... Uh... What's up, dog? Looking fresh as ever. Oh, dog. Oh, dog. It's the best. Hold up. But <laughs> well, we got a Vogue. Yeah. We got a Vogue. Oh, you want to go?